So the third part of um, this uh, first unit on working with files is going to focus on reading a file line by line. And that's because we're often dealing with text files and text files are generally arranged as lines of text. Um, so as we saw in the second part of the uh, unit, the, you can just go and read uh, an entire file in, in one go. Um, but there's a couple of reasons why you maybe don't want to go and do that. So first of all, um, since it's more convenient to process things line by line by line in many cases, the first thing you'd end up having to go and do is simply split that uh, big contents of the file you, you've read in into separate lines. And that's just extra code that maybe we don't need to bother writing. The main reason, however, is that um, it's fine if you're dealing with a little file, but if you're dealing with a very, very large file, say gigabyte or bigger files, then if you try reading it all in one go, you have to create a huge amount of memory in your computer, and that could be more memory than your computer has. Whereas if you read it in line by line by line, the total amount of memory you need at any given point is only one line's worth. And so that's much more flexible, and much easier to go and do. And finally, fortunately, Python actually makes it dead easy to read a file in line by line by line. So we're still working with the same uh, file as we were before. So we have the same with open read as file. But now what do you see I'm doing? I'm doing for line in my file. In other words, I'm treating my file like something I can iterate over in a for loop, something I can cycle through in a for loop. And that's because um, my file is a text file, and it is something I can loop through, I can iterate through line as I go, because I'm going to just simply read it line by line by line. So this code is simply going to read in that line and then print out those lines. And you see it is the same lines as we had in the file before. However, notice you've got an extra blank line in the output. And this is happening because at the end of every line in the text file, there is a new line character. Um, so it's a special, a special character that's not normally visible that um, says, OK, move to the next line now. Uh, in fact, actually, it turns out that the character or characters that we use to mark the end of a line is different, depending on whether you're on uh, a Mac, whether you're on uh, a Linux machine, or whether you're on a Windows machine. So uh, Macs use a carriage return, Linux uses a new line, uh, and Windows uses a carriage return and a new line stuck together. Um, this is just simply historical annoyance, um, uh, but it, it happens. But within Python, it always just says, okay, no, we're just gonna make it a, a new line uh, character. So then when we print the line, what we end up printing is a new line character because there's one stuck to the end of the variable line, and then another one because we're printing it. And so we end up with a blank line because we've got two end of new line markers, one after the other. So to get rid of that, uh, all you have to go and do is to use the dot strip uh, string method. So if you do some string dot strip, what it does is it removes all of those hidden white space characters. So that's obviously space, tab, new line, carriage return. All of those get taken off from the beginning and the end of the line. And so it starts with the first non white space character and it finishes at the last non white space character. Uh, and so if you're able to do that, then um, if you do that, then, then you've ended up with an experienced blank line. Um, the other thing you quite often want to go and do is keep a count of which line you're on. And for that, the enumerate function that I think I've discussed in the syntax series of video tutorials is really useful. So you can write some code that looks a bit more like this. So I'm now uh, doing for line number comma line in enumerate my file. So that's the bit that's making sure that line number keeps count of which line I'm on, as well as giving me the, the line that I'm actually reading the file. And then you can see I'm doing line equals line dot strep, which is the bit that's removing the end of line marker or the new line marker from the end of each of the, the lines I've read from the file. So now I print something which is um, just the, the lines without the extra spaces in it. And I'm also showing you which line number I'm on at the time. OK, um, if you find yourself doing um, something like uh, this, where you keep adding the lines to the list, so I create some list of lines and I end up doing um, for line in my file lines.append, 
um, line. Well, you might actually want to ask why it is you're doing that because it's not a particularly efficient way of, 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 of processing a file. But if you do have a good reason for doing that, then you might find the read lines um, is what you want because it makes less code. So you can just read uh, all the lines in the file and make a list of them. Or indeed, you can pass it a number of lines to go and read in the read lines. It'll read just that number of, of lines. Um, and here you can show that I'm, I'm just showing that reading that file either which way around gives you the same answer. It's the same list of lines that's read in both ways. It's just one needs two lines of code and the other needed uh, four. If you find yourself needing to go and read to the next line uh, in the file, but you're not inside a for loop or something, then you can use next to just get the next line in the file. So uh, in this little example, what we're doing is we're reading the line in, uh, line, file in line by line by line, but then I've just said, well, if we get to a line that starts with a two, then um, uh, stop reading the file. So we use break to jump out of that for loop. So we stop reading the file in line by line by line, but I still want to know what was the next line after the one that started with a two. And so I just do next my file and assign that to, to a variable. And then I get the next variable, which you can see in this case started with a three, um, which if you go back and look at the contents of that file, then you see that that is the line that came after the one that started with a two. Um, and again, this is kind of a common thing you need to go end up doing maybe is scanning through a file, looking for something that tells you you've reached a certain point in the file, like I've reached the end of the metadata and I need to start reading the data. If you think back to those file formats I showed in the first part of this unit, um, often they had a block of metadata at the start of the file and then the data really started. Um, and in that case, you might suddenly go, okay, well, I need to read the line of column headers um, after I've got to the end of the metadata. So this is the sort of thing you go and do to do that. So as I was saying that um, often uh, in physics, of course, what we're going to go and do is we're going to have uh, lines, we're going to have files where we've got lines and lines and lines of data arranged in uh, some table uh, with some kind of uh, delimiter, some kind of separator character uh, between each, um, each line. So um, what we're going to talk about here is how you might actually go around processing text files. Now I want to emphasize that this is doing this at this kind of very low primitive level is a lot of additional work. Um, and so this is not really how you should be doing this. This is just showing you the, the principle of what it is that's going on when you use some of the more advanced libraries that we're going to introduce in the future units. So in the last example in the previous part of this uh, unit, we illustrated how you could use the flow control statement break to jump out of the loop when you've reached a certain point in it. You can also use continue if you want to skip over to the next line in the file. So here's an example where you might go and do this. So again, it's the same file. We're reading it in line by line by line. But what I've said is that we're going to stop when we get to the, the line that starts with a four. Um, so that's the same as we had in the example at the end of the previous part. And then I'm also going to get the, the first character in the line. Um, so remember, these lines are strings. And so I can index them um, with square brackets, the number. And so this is pulling out the index zero of that string, which is the first character. And then I'm saying, well, if that first character is either a one or a three, then continue. And what that means, it just means we're going to stop running through this line. We're going to move to the next line in the file. So we're going to jump to the start of the for loop again. So then you can see, and if we don't do either of those things, we'll just print, print the line. So what you can see here is it ends up printing the lines that um, don't have, don't start with a one or a three. And also it stops when it reaches the line that started with a four. So this is ways in which we're, we're using it to uh, control exactly which lines of the file we're reading. Okay, so that's ways you can use the, the flow control inside the loop to let you either skip over lines or to get to the line that you want to get to. Um, and then stop processing the lines line by line by line. Um, 
So if we actually wanted to go and use this data file to go and like read, read, treat as the data files reading the data from, then um, you would look at it and you go, well, okay, the, the very first line was some sort of comment. Uh, that's probably what we want to go and ignore. Uh, we then see that we have a line of column headings, and those are probably things we want to keep because that's going to tell us what the data means. And then we have a table which has six rows of three columns of numbers, and those numbers are all separated by commas. And so we, we want to go and really do is collect the, the data for each of those columns. So in order to process that, we'd probably do something that looks a bit follow the process like this. So we'd read in um, the file line by line by line. If the file starts with a hash, we would skip over it because it's a comma. We would split the line up uh, by commas, um, also making sure to take care of the new line characters at the end of each line. We would try and convert each column to a number and append it to a list. And if that doesn't work because it's not a number, then we know we're looking at the line which has the column labels, in which case we just need to keep all of the columns as, as labels. So the code to actually go and do that looks a bit like this. So first of all, I create three lists to keep my X data, my Y data, and my Z data in. And I'm then gonna open the file and I've got that for loop, which is gonna read that file in line by line by line. So the first thing I said is the line started with a, a hash, then it's a comment and I should skip it. So that's what that if line starts with hash is doing. And the continue just tells us we're going to skip back to the start of the for loop again and do the next line. And then after that, I'm going to go and um, split the line into columns. So that's what that line dot strip, that's getting rid of the new line, dot split on commas. And so that means that what columns gets is a list of strings, which may or may not be numbers, or they might be the column headers, but they're a list of strings. So now um, there are various things I could do. I could have a look at the um, first letter of the first column and see whether it was something that could be part of a number. Um, but actually in Python, often the easiest way to do things is to try and do something and then pick up if the error, if you hit an error, and work out what the error was and what it meant. So that's the approach I'm doing here. I'm simply going to just try and append to the X data, the Y data, and Z data, the uh, relevant column converted to a float. Um, so float column zero is going to be the first column, which was a string converted to a floating point number and then added to the list. Now, what will happen is that if this is the line with the labels in it, when I try and do that, and I try and um, convert the string x hyphen data to a floating point number, it's going to throw uh, a value error um, because that's the error you get when you convert a float, something that isn't a floating point number into a floating point number. Um, so in that case, I'm going to go to the accept. And at that point, I simply am just going to um, store the list of columns into an array, into a variable called labels. Um, and I need to do that because then I'm going to go back to the next line in my file and I'm going to redefine what columns mean. So if I don't keep hold of it in a separate variable, I'm going to lose my column headers. Um, and so we're going to go through our file like that. And then when we get to the last line in the file, that for loop is going to stop running because it knows I've reached the end of the file. Um, and again, this comes back to the difference between a for loop and a while loop. Um, I'm using a for loop because I know that my file has a definite end in it, in that it's only so many lines long. If I was going to do something where it had no, where it wasn't going to be indefinitely long, where there was no fixed end point, then you'd want to use a while loop here. But for this thing, we're going to use a for loop. And then to finish off, I just, after I've closed the file, I just print out what I got. And you can see that it's got my um, three sets of data plus the column headers. So this is kind of the, the long-winded way of processing a data file. And again, I want to emphasize that um, this is a lot of work and it still makes quite a lot of assumptions about the file um, uh, that might cause you problems. Um, and actually we've got a whole bunch of uh, both built-in modules and extra modules that make dealing with this sort of tabular data so much easier. Um, uh, and we're going to cover that um, in later units in this topic.